Well, 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 we're back again with what I think is the most elegant M4 MacBook Air cooling solution yet. I thought I was done making these until the dunk. In the last MacBook Air thermal mod video, I managed to get this MacBook Air to beat this MacBook Pro in a 500 raw photo export to JPEG in Lightroom. And I did that using a cumbersome and somewhat sticky and inconvenient series of thermal pads and aluminum heat sinks. And it turns out the only thing that makes this computer slower than this computer is its reaction to heat. Well, thanks to the collective mind of the YouTube comment section, we've got two more things to try. The second one being so clean and effective, I actually do suggest this for MacBook Air users who are trying to make their Airs do pro things. And a disclaimer, if you only use your computer for watching things or emailing people or buying things or arguing with people on Reddit on the internet, this will not improve the functionality of your computer at all. These thermal mods are only helpful if you intend to put your entry level, designed for light use, casual computers through sustained heavy loads that are meant for pro computers, like long exports, local LLM fuckery, compiling big chunks of code, Logic Pro with tons of tracks, if you're trying to use this thing for demanding games, or dang it, if you just wanna run up the numbers on Cinebench. Aside from immersion cooling your laptop, which yes, it looks like based on the subscriber numbers, I will be implementing that plan as soon as next week. I had promised that once I reached 50,000 subscribers, I would be dunking this thing in dialectic fluid to find its true maximum potential, so subscribe for that sweet, sweet content. Today's second mod is about the closest thing to that and about 200 times more convenient to apply to your computer than having a tank of cooling oil and a recirculator on your desk. I'm testing two things from the comments today, both of which are designed to be super convenient and have just ready on your desk without anything sticky or anything like crazy. Also, whether you like it or not, today you're gonna get a little lesson on the technology behind the Peltier module, also known as thermal electric cooling, as well as some of the more magical properties of copper. Okay, fine, if the engineering doesn't interest you at all, feel free to skip to this point in the video for the mod and testing of this MacBook Air. For the rest of you, you probably have somewhat of at least a limited understanding of how air conditioning works. There's a metal box inside your house or car, or surprisingly your refrigerator works this same way too, which has a cold gas inside a copper tube inside a radiator. Air from inside your house or car or fridge blows over those gas-filled copper tubes, cooling the air that blows back into your car or house or fridge while heating the gas inside the tubes. The gas is then pumped outside where there is a loud metal thing, a compressor, where that gas is compressed into a now heated fluid, which is run through a series of copper pipes connected to a giant radiator with a fan that blows that heat that was in your house or car or fridge, and that is now in that fluid, out into the environment, leaving behind a cooled liquid, which is then pumped back into the house or car or fridge. It's then expanded back into a gas that, as a result of engineering sorcery and phase-changing thermodynamics, becomes really cold. That runs through another radiator in the metal box in your closet, or under your hood, or in your fridge, where more warm air from inside your house or car or fridge is blown back over that radiator, connected to a tube filled with cold gas, and the cycle just repeats forever. It was a breakthrough that changed the world, and I love a heat pump. This thing manages to give you that same net result. One side of it gets really hot, the other side of it gets really cold. It does this through a completely different means called thermoelectric cooling using the Peltier effect. It is a lot less efficient than pumping gas around, but it is much more targeted and compact. And after a very deep dive into how this actually works, I've decided not to describe it here in great detail because it would result in 95% of you leaving this video. But I encourage you to look it up if you're curious. Very simplified, there are alternating plates of specialized ceramic material inside here. They're positioned and connected in such a way that when a voltage is applied through them in a circuit, electrons do the work of the gas in your AC system and shuffle heat around, leaving one side very hot and one side very cold. So the hot side gets a little heat sink and a fan to blow that heat away, allowing the cold side to continuously accept more heat from whatever's touching it and blow that off into the air. But before I get this thing going, which is gonna be the final form of my MacBook Air, I wanted to try one other thing from the comment section of the previous thermal mod videos because it is a really good idea, a slab of copper. Actually, I have to take this one more step back in time because the most important part of this mod has already been done from the last two videos. I took apart this laptop and it turns out that by design and for your comfort, Apple has left an air gap inside the computer between the bottom of the case that might rest on your thighs while you're using it and the hot, hot motherboard inside, which is located right about here. Heat rises, so that means a majority of the heat loss from this computer will be up through the keyboard and not down onto your lap. Well, instead, I opened this computer up and I got rid of that air 
air gap. I made a thermal bridge using these flexible thermal pads. This material does a great job of thermally bridging two things that are touching either side of it. In this case, on the inside of the back case of this computer, there's a thermal pad. And then on the other side of that thermal pad is the motherboard, giving that heat a much more direct route to escape straight down. So with all that set up, first we're trying this copper bar. Why would this do anything, Nicholas? You might find yourself asking. Good question. Every material has its own rating for thermal conductivity. Let me explain. And you can feel this for yourself. For instance, if you're ever outside in the wintertime, or even in an air conditioned room, if you go and touch, let's say a wooden railing on a deck, or a paper notebook in a house, it's not gonna feel extra cold on your hand. Wood and paper are pretty terrible at moving heat around. They have a low thermal conductivity. But if you touch something made of metal on that same cold day or in that same air conditioned room, it's gonna feel like the metal thing is much colder than the wood thing. It's actually not. These two things are about the same temperature. It's just the metal is able to quickly pull the heat out of your hand at the point of contact, leaving your hand feeling colder where you touch the metal. Metal has a relatively high thermal conductivity. It transfers heat a lot faster than wood or paper. But even within metals, Different metals have a higher or lower thermal conductivity themselves. Copper is pretty close to the highest. Silver beats it, but a bar of silver this size would cost more than your computer. Copper surfaces are not super common around your house, but if you happen to come across one, it'll feel to your hand like it's twice as cold as a steel surface. Anyway, what that means here is that this copper bar, when it comes into contact with the surface of the bottom of this aluminum laptop, it'll literally pull the heat off of that surface. And the second important property of metals for this purpose is thermal mass. Copper is heavy, so it can sort of store up a bunch of that heat as long as the copper bar is thick enough. So basically, with a computer sitting on a copper bar, it's gonna take longer for the processor to heat up because the heat the processor's producing is gonna be pulled out through the thermal pads and then pulled out further through this copper bar, and then it'll sort of pile up in the copper bar. And then there is some rate at which the surface area of this copper bar is able to transfer that heat out into the air of this room, and we're aiming to get it as close as possible to that rate being the same as the rate that the heat is building up. That makes sense? I think it was clear. Let's just try it. And to make up for the imperfections of the surfaces, the aluminum on the bottom of a laptop is not perfectly smooth. I'm using these graphene thermal sheets. They are not sticky and they are reusable. So they're just gonna sit on the copper and fill in the tiny gaps, ever so slightly improving the physical connection between the aluminum and the copper bar. And then this is just another aluminum slab. It's just the same height as this copper bar, making sure everything lays flat on there. And geez, I'm so sorry it took that long to explain all that and we're just only finally now getting to the tests. But here we go. This isn't gonna beat the MacBook Pro, but I would bet a paycheck that it's gonna do significantly better than than the thermal pads alone on this desk. In my previous test, with just the thermal pad modded MacBook Air on a bare desk, scored 11,509 on Cinebench. So that's the score to beat. And for instance, that's up from 9,000 something before I did the thermal mod in the first place, which was an incredible jump. It literally doubled the amount of electricity this computer would use. And if this is significantly better, I would argue that it's not inconvenient at all just to have a copper plate hanging around somewhere on your desk that your laptop sits on. Especially if you primarily work using an external monitor and this just sits off to the side somewhere. Turn a little bit to the left so the light catches it just so. Isn't that better? That's way better. Real quick, I have no sponsor for this video. I'm not trying to sell you anything, but I do have a link down in the description that just goes to the Amazon main page. And anything you buy after visiting Amazon through that link magically funds the channel at a rate of like 2%. If you bookmark it for any time you go to Amazon, it's almost like you get to help me grow without costing you any money. Talk about a win-win. And I do have all the things I used for this video linked below too. At the start of the test, you can already see that it's staying at over 20 watts for longer, which means that it's staying at a higher clock speed for longer than with the thermal pads alone. I have this test running for five minutes. What you're seeing on the screen is a sped up timeline of the vitals of the computer for each test. In both cases, it's slowing down the clock speed little by little to put out less heat. With the thermal pads alone, throughout that five minutes, it gets down to a little over three gigahertz and flattens out. And with the copper bar, it actually bottoms out around 3.4 gigahertz over five minutes. And it's pulling 17 watts instead of 14 watts. Just this slab of copper and these graphene sheets actually ended up getting us to 11,796, which is a bit above the score of the thermal pads alone. It totally makes sense because this copper is gonna be sort of sapping up and banking a lot of that heat that's building up during the test. The processors ran 13% faster. The computer let in about 20% more electricity from its battery, but we can absolutely do better than this. 
Enter the Peltier cooling device. This one's designed with a magnetic surface. So with the help of my thermal camera attachment, I was able to pinpoint the exact spot on the back of my MacBook Air that heats up the most, which is where the processor is, and then slap a little magnetic circle on the bottom of the MacBook Air, allowing me to pull heat directly off of the processor through the thermal electric device via the thermal pad bridge. Even better, this thing is super clean and just clicks onto the back of the MacBook here. It stays really well. And even better than that, for all the continued comments from the other videos about thermal pads heating up the battery of the computer. With this installed, the laptop battery is actually going to end up being cooler than with the default configuration. The heat now has a direct pathway straight out of the processor and into the air in this room. It's not going to bake the inside of this case. The cold side in this thing actually gets down below zero Celsius if it's not pressed up against something that's producing heat. Here we go on the tests, and I didn't want to just run Cinebench over and over. I already proved in the last video that if you can cool this MacBook Air enough, it can actually beat the MacBook Pro in a 500 picture Lightroom export. This MacBook Pro has the same 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, 16 gigs of RAM as the MacBook Air. Its only superpower is that built in heat spreader and fan. I mean, and ports and screen and bigger battery. We're starting off with a harder 1200 raw photo to JPEG export from Lightroom. And at the beginning of this, again, these graphs are super sped up. The MacBook Pro over here, the MacBook Air over here. This test took like eight minutes, but you can see at the beginning, the MacBook Pro throttled its processor speed down pretty quick and found like a good solid operating speed. Meanwhile, at that same time, the Air was giving its processors more power than the Pro. 20 watts compared to 15 to 16 watts. And it lowered the gigahertz of its CPU a lot slower. But ultimately, the Air kept lowering them down as the test continued. And the MacBook Pro was able to ultimately pull ahead and finish 19 seconds faster. 7 minutes and 48 seconds to 8 minutes and 9 seconds. Did I do that math right? But go ahead and try this same thing on a default MacBook Air this test will take like 15 minutes. Next, I had a bunch of comments from software developers, and I guess I never realized how hard code compiling makes CPUs work. I installed ARM64 based Linux on both of these computers through Parallels and did a Linux kernel build. And I should be clear that when I say all of those words in a row, I don't fully understand what it all means, but I sure can follow instructions on how to do it. Here is the modded MacBook Air building a Linux kernel next to the same spec MacBook Pro. And it looks like code compiling uses 100% of all available CPUs. So this thing is really cooking. The MacBook Air is slowly throttling down its CPU, but just a little bit. Without the mod, apparently this takes over 10 minutes on a MacBook Air. But check this out. Ding! The MacBook Pro is done, and just 8 seconds later, the MacBook Air finishes at 6 minutes and 39 seconds for a kernel build of Linux. Eight seconds difference. I reran that test without the Peltier cooler and just the thermal pads alone, and it finished in seven minutes and two seconds. So it's able to finish that a little more than half a minute faster with the Peltier cooler versus the thermal pads alone. The thermal pad mod does so much for the MacBook Air. And noticing in these test results that initially at the beginning of everything, the Air is actually going harder than the MacBook Pro. Like the MacBook Pro will dip its processor speed a little bit earlier than the Air will. I did rerun the Cinebench test to dig into that a little bit further. And what do you know? In a single Cinebench test, the MacBook Air with a Peltier cooler and thermal pads installed scores 12,721. MacBook Pro, 12,689. That's MacBook Air beating MacBook Pro in a multi-core Cinebench test as I live and breathe. This is a not at all inconvenient setup. When I'm at my desk, I can just slap this puck onto the back of my MacBook Air and get a 30% speed boost. I'm basically always using a mouse and keyboard when I'm at my desk. So this thing will just sit over here closed and off to the side, staying cool. One thing to note, when you do get your MacBook to run harder this way, it's literally using more power to get, well, more power. Which means if you're doing all this on battery mode, you're going to be running down the battery faster, at least if you're asking your computer to do hard stuff. The MacBook Pro has a bigger battery for a reason, and you can run the little cooler off of the Mac itself. But these ports only want to put out like 10 watts through USB-C, and this thing can accept up to 35 watts. I don't know, that's a lot more points of data for your consideration. I put a link down below to this really good USB-C wall adapter that really maxes this thing out from Kanakit. These are made for Raspberry Pis when you're overclocking those little guys. It's looking a lot like the next MacBook Air video is going to be the immersion cooling one. And I'm headed over to the warehouse tomorrow to start getting that tank plumbed up. Goodbye. Hmm. Dunkin' Donuts today. I'm stuck in here. That's how it's done. It's just cardboard.